This is the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max 10 core CPU and a 24 core GPU and a 16 core neural engine with 32 GB undefined memory and 1 TB SSD storage. I did choose to not max out the M1 Max because I don't need that much GPU power. 24 core GPU is more than enough for me. I think the maxed out M1 Pro will be good enough for me. But the reason I did go for the M1 Max is because I want to future proof my MacBook Pro. I also not maxed out the RAM. I did go for 32GB of RAM. The reason I did not go for 64GB of RAM is because I don't think I need it. I mostly edit in Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro, I know, After Effects needs a lot of RAM, but on my main Windows desk I also have 32GB of RAM. And it just works, so 32GB on my MacBook is enough for a couple of years. It's also the first time that I upgraded my storage to 1TB. On my first MacBook a 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro base model, I had a 128GB SSD and it was not enough. I also had a 16-inch MacBook Pro, also the base model, I had 512GB SSD and that was good. But this time I want to hold my MacBook for 3 to 4 years, so I did go for the 1TB version. Apple did a great job on the new design of the MacBook Pro. I love it so much. The new body design looks like the older MacBooks from 2012, but in a modern design. The front of the body is flat and at the bottom it gives a nice curve, so if you pick up the MacBook Pro, it will not cut into your hands as much as the 2016 design. At the bottom there is now the MacBook Pro naming engraved in the aluminum. On the back is of course the Apple logo. The 14 and 16 inch are pretty similar in design, the only difference are that the 16 inch is bigger, thicker and heavier. The screen did also get the big design update. Apple did finally make the bezels thinner and this looks so clean. Also the notches now on the MacBook 2. I will come back to that subject later on in the video. And yeah, the 14 inch is technically thinner than the old 13 inch MacBook Pro. It looks thicker on a photo but in reality you feel that the 14 inch is thinner and I like that. So Apple did add some ports back. They did add it back massive and it's now a new version. Now it's MagSafe 3 with fast charging. They brought also the SD card slot back and also HDMI. It's HDMI 2, not 2.1. So you can use 4K 120 frames per second with the HDMI port. There are also three Thunderbolt 4 ports and a headphone jack. The last design change is a keyboard. So as you can see now the wall keyboard is black and the touch bar is removed and replaced it with function keys. I did love the touch bar. But now that it is gone, I'm already used to it again. Apple did also redesign the touch ID button. Now there is a circle in a square button and that looks so clean. I did go for the 14 inch screen size, because I wanted a compact and not so heavy laptop. On my main windows desk I have a 49 inch screen, so sometimes I will dock my MacBook to it. First of all I will say the notch is not a problem, it's not in the way of something. The new screen is mini LED, that means that the display has a dimming zone, it is technically LCD but a much better version of it. Because of the dimming zones the black is also much better. The display has also promotion, that's a 120Hz display, so the screen is really smooth. And it also does have high dynamic range, fun fact. This is the best display on a notebook and I believe that this display is so good. It has a 6 speaker sound system and 4 cancelling woofers. The sound is amazing as always from Apple. This MacBook also supports spatial audio. That means if you listen to something on the MacBook speakers it will give an immersive sound experience. The MacBook Pro has also 3 studio quality microphones in it. So if you need to change something in your video and you're not having a microphone with you. Then you can really quick use the built in studio microphones in the MacBook. That's just crazy. The power that's in this laptop is just mind blowing. At the beginning of this video I was saying that I have chosen the M1 Max 24 core GPU. But now we will talk about the difference between the M1 Pro and M1 Max. First of all I want to say I will make later a video of what this laptop can do with the power it contains. So if you have any requests on what I need to test just let me know. Because I did have my MacBook only for 5 days and did not have the time to test everything out yet. I can say I edited already a part of this video on it. It was just the unboxing part at the beginning in Premiere Pro. It was nothing happening. Heavy, only 4K 30 frames per second footage and some color correction. But for now I can say it runs really fast in full resolution without any frame drops. So this is my experience for now. I will come back to the performance in a later video. So what are the difference between the M1 Pro and M1 Max? The biggest difference are the GPU cores. The M1 Pro starts at an 8 core CPU and a 14 core GPU. You can max out the M1 Pro to a 10 core CPU and a 16 core GPU. The M1 Max you can max out to a 32 core GPU. The other thing that separates them is that the M1 Pro can get up to 200 gigabytes memory bandwidth and the M1 Max can get all the way up to 400 gigabytes memory bandwidth and the M1 Pro can get up to 32 gigabytes of RAM and the M1 Max to 64 gigabytes of RAM. 
So, I will be honest. The things I don't like are no problems, only some things that will be better if they done it in another way. I will start with the touch ID button. Again, it's not a problem. I will love that the touch ID button was also backlighted like the other keys. The notch. No, the notch is not a problem for me. The only problem I have is that there is no face ID inside. I think it's not possible yet to put face ID into a thin screen. The iPhone and iPad are thicker than a MacBook screen. But I think the iMac will get it first because the iMac is thicker and does have more room to fit the face ID sensor. Maybe later on they can make a really thin face ID sensor to put it in MacBooks. So for now we need to be happy with Touch ID, that's also nice. Maybe there are more things I don't like, but I only have this MacBook for 5 days. So if I find some other things I don't like, I will name it in my older video. So this was the video for this week. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I will respond to it. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe and thanks for watching the video and I will see you the next time.